Jesse, I, I got your Discord message about um, making some progress on the Plenty CMS. So it sounds like you know you've done some things with Dino, possibly. Uh, do you want to just yeah. kind of walk me through some of the stuff that you've been working on? I don't know if you want to share your screen. Yeah, um, it, I would like to share them. Actually, I've been refactoring the the, the whole lab, CMS library. So okay, I've made new structure for it and so it's modular you can extend it with modules but i haven't i don't have the modules yet i have okay. the structure <laughs> sure. to put yeah. the modules in that that's that's important so can so everyone can make their own version of the cms that makes sense yeah yeah having a mod that, that's what, so like adding different widgets to do different and things like we have the content ex editable extend it for with other libraries or sure. other modules of the CMS. Okay. Like, for example, different backends. And if there is a cu some custom backend, you can put it there and um, different fields and or UI components or something like that. Cool. In, in terms of backend, so that, that sounds great. Um, mm. it, so just to make sure we're kind of on the same page of uh, like the overall vision. Um, mm. So in like the main kind of like plenty ecosystem, the backend would be something like GitHub or GitLab. Is that what you're thinking yeah. in terms of a backend? Okay, perfect. But it could also be a SQL database or in some weird, weird scenario. But, sure. Or Mong MongoDB or by through some server of, for, for example, or something like that. Yeah, though that's really Whatever cool. You can imagine it's safe to do. <laughs> cool. You can maybe even do like a like a Superbase backend or something like that potentially. Yeah, I, I haven't looked into Superbase, but yeah, they have their whole probably. they have their own um they have their own user authentication and like kind of crud system. So maybe maybe that's not the best example, but yeah, cool. Maybe it could be done. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But it it allows like hacking into the CMS and uh, enabling and disabling modules. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so okay. you build your own CMS in a way. Yeah. But okay. The thing I wanted to ask you about is um, if it's well, I will show you first. But sure. if it's okay, okay to go with Dino instead of, for example, Go. Yeah, so so I guess I, I I think it'd be helpful for me to see kind of like how that's implemented. Because yeah. so in my mind, again, like a, we have to kind of look through this stuff together to, to perfectly understand. But I was kind of picturing like, OK, so the CMS basically lives in JavaScript. And, and I'm not talking like Node.js versus Dino or any of that. I'm talking mm -hmm. just kind of like browser JavaScript, yeah, right? And that's where, yeah. where most stuff lives. Um, and then obviously, there might be some configuration needed in places. So I don't know if that's going to be with like a, you know, a JSON or a YAML file or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding like where the backend configuration comes in and how that's structured. So maybe if you could show me yeah. what you're thinking there, that would be helpful. Okay. So I'll be sharing the screen. Sure. Um, wait a sec. Ah, uh, I have the double screen pro problem again. Okay. Yeah. Can you see it now? Uh, yes, I can. There's a, yep. a GitHub repository. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in the Dino branch, there's okay. the, uh, refactoring what I have done, or basically pulling it the structure from ground up, mm -hmm. completely like an orphan, orphan uh, branch. Sure. 
Um, it's like a whole new project, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. But I will be using the code from the other branch here. Okay. Once for the modules. But uh, yeah. So the first thing I want to show you is how you create a new project for the Plenty sure. CMS. Yeah. So it would be like something like um, making a Plenty project, but mm -hmm. for the CMS library. Okay. Uh, this create script here, which creates a directory and files for the project. Okay. Um, so this kind of is like its own command line tool itself, it seems like. Is that? Yeah. Okay. It is built with Dino. Okay. De Deno. Dino. Uh, I know. <laughs> Yeah, De Deno, I yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it either. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I see I see what you're talking about now. Okay. So if I get the raw raw file, raw URL. Oh shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> raw URL mm -hmm. from GitHub. And paste it uh, like run it with Dino. Okay. Dino run. You have to put some Jesse, permissions. are you able to make your, your terminal a little bigger just to make it easier to see um, if possible? I, feel like I think control control shift plus, I think, makes it bigger on mine. I don't know if that. No, it doesn't. Oh. <laughs> Maybe if, it, huh? if I show it with Visual Studio Code. Oh, that might be easier. Yep. Okay, so, yeah, that's that's good. If you if you are able to make a big oh yeah, that's oh so much better. Okay, thank you. Now, <laughs> so if I run Dino run mm -hmm. with some flags like it has to read the directory for the current directory at least, mm -hmm. or uh, knowing if there's files in the directory already. It's okay. just for actually writing, but it has to read and also write the current directory at least or the target directory okay so it could be you you have it you can limit it as this is as much as you can limit the permissions for the script mm -hmm. it, the cms would be the target library okay and um and this is sorry, and just to be clear, this is just for setting up the scaffolding for the project. This yeah. isn't actually talking yeah. about like writing CMS changes locally. That's not about that, is it? It's just uh, for initiating the project. Okay. The CMS project. Okay. Or what you what you call scaffolding, probably. Sure. Sure. Yep. So, with this command, it would be this command would be from the readme, probably. Mm -hmm. You could copy paste it, so you don't have to remember it. But it runs this script from the GitHub and creates CMS file uh, okay. folder where the, where the project is. So if actually I should probably do reload because I have made some changes also there, mm -hmm. like so. Let's see if this works. <laughs> sure. Don't Live demos so. are always fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. And it runs the script. So now, now there's the CMS folder. And if you if you open Visual Studio Code there, mm -hmm. you can see that there is um, the VS Code folder, config folder, and build script Okay. for the library. Mm -hmm. The config folder has um, modules file that has all the imports for modules. This can be URLs or, uh, oh no, these cannot be URLs. These are imports for the config files. Okay. Which live in modules folder. And for example, there's the GitHub, GitLab backend. Okay. That and that's has, kind of, okay. That imports the module from external source. Oh, okay. And then it configures it with some parameters or options. And so now this is kind of what we we looked at last time together, that that raw GitHub um, user content URL. 
that's yeah. that's all the CMS work that we talked about. Before? Yeah, it's okay. It creates the create script, mm -hmm. create project script, creates yep. this file, um, and it's the same URL except there's uh, added modules and this last end is added there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it finds the correct module in the in the repository. But if you wanted to add a custom module, you would create a similar file and, and add your own URL there. Mm -hmm. Where okay. you can find it. It could be in Dino land, for example. There's a Dino repository for all the modules. Mm -hmm. Dino, Dino land. Okay. And this would also be Dino land probably when we publish it. Is Dino land kind of like their NPM or something like that? It's it's like the NPM, but it's using URLs. Okay. Well, cool. We could cache this in the study code, so it doesn't burn. Now it knows what what conf configure config Configurations it needs, mm -hmm. except I haven't configured uh, or made this module yet. So sure. maybe we will look at this. If we cache it, then there should be a... no. There's no <laughs> no like hmm. there should be intelligent intelligence description for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's. Yeah, there it is. Okay. It finds it from that URL that there's an should be an um, trigger uh, property in this object. Sure. Yeah. So now if we run the pull script with sh, or I should add for similar boot script but for windows and mac os and so so on mm -hmm. but this is for linux at sure least. probably also for mac os yeah it's a it's bash script basically yeah it's shell script sure bash basically bash bash script okay so if we run this it it creates a dist folder and there is the library uh -huh. that's similar to the previous versions, so there's mm -hmm. the entry file, but the entry file configures now the modules and listens for the uh, init, initialization, initiation hooks, mm -hmm. which is CMS yet again. Cool. And then there the app, or app GS, or the, 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 this was previously init yes so it, mm -hmm. uh, it just initializes the um, CMS okay and it's the whole CMS application actually oh interesting but and it's not yet implemented gotcha gotcha so that will eventually will that eventually pull the whole app in from the the third like the third party URL or will it always just use the code from the third party URL? Is that the uh, it it pulls the code from these modules that are mm -hmm. here. So now there is the URL fragment init trigger mm -hmm. uh, that is fetched from this URL. Gotcha. And it creates this code here. Yeah. Cool. And so actually calls the Im imports this file mm -hmm. because the init fu function in the API, the plenty CMS API library. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it goes back and forth between remote and local things, but it's simple for a, to start a project and pull the project. Sure. So um, I think I think it's really cool that how can you open up your disk folder one more time? Yep. So the plenty CMS. So I think that's great that you're thinking about modular ways of <clears throat> letting people extend or, or change things. I think that's um, something that we're going to definitely want at some point. Um, mm -hmm. In terms yeah. of scaffolding, 
for for the Plenty project specifically, we're probably going to build all the scaffolding into into the binary itself, right? So yeah. anytime that we need to kind of build out folders and, and files, we'll probably have that as like a native Plenty command. That way, our users don't have to have like an, uh, another runtime on their computer, so they don't need Dino mm. or Node or any any of those types. Yeah, of that that that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. But um, if we want this to be also a separate, like not so tightly integrated to Plenty. Yeah, there, there's a, I think, yeah, there's totally an advantage for people who want to share the work that's being done, right? So people who don't yeah. want to use the CMS in Plenty, then this but, makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. yeah. But that's the problem with the Dino, that you have to ha have the Dino runtime in yeah. your computer. Yeah. And for a lot of people, that's that's not a barrier at all. That's that you know, for, for a lot of folks, that's that's totally easy. And using commands like that's easy. Um, we're we're trying to basically uh, make like as little dependencies as possible, right? So like the whole idea here is that you, you know you download plenty one time, and then you don't need to con configure anything else, and you should be able to get up and running. So that's that's what we're going through. But I think you know, yeah. interacting with in our own way, basically interacting with that disk folder um, is, is how we plan on doing it. Um, going back to kind of how Plenty sets up things, I, I think I had mentioned before that we have this concept of an, we call it the ejectable core or like yeah. a way to eject out of the core. So basically there's, um, if you start up a new Plenty project, there's only like two real, con I mean, there's a few concepts, but there's two main ones. There's a content folder, which has JSON files of content. And then there's a layout folder, which has um, uh, Svelte files that basically build the structure of your page, right? And there's not a lot of other stuff in Plenty. So there's, you actually don't see anywhere um, where like you're doing the entry point for the project. You don't have a router. You don't have any of those things because those things all live uh, behind the scenes in an ejectable uh, file system. Mm -hmm. And they're only, only if you want to see them and tinker with them, would you eject that and then be able to change those files. I plan on having the, C the CMS kind of living a similar way, right? So mm -hmm. the, the CMS will live in that ejectable file system. You won't see it at all, but if you want to extend it or add to it, you could basically you know, say plenty eject, you know, CMS, and then it'll, it'll eject a bunch of CMS files. And then you could add components, change components, like say, say we have a, a, a content editable widget. So when you click on the page, it, it shows up uh, as you can edit the page. And then maybe you get a little widget that's like bold, italicize and underline. And maybe you want to add something like block quote to it, right? But obviously if you don't see the CMS, how are you supposed to do it? What you could do is you could eject that, that component specifically and change it and modify it. And that's kind of yeah. how I envisioned that. But this is... The for uh, this is doing the same basically. Yeah, but exactly. In the Dino ex ecosystem, and um, it's it's not like hackable, but it's like uh, compa composable with modules. Yep. Yeah, and I think that's cool. I think yeah, having having the the basically the dist set up that way to to allow extension and composing things is important because that's what we're going to ultimately need for our our CMS as well. Um, I Jesse, don't know could, how oh. how you could do the same the modularity with Go because yeah. So I, I guess that that ent the the file that you have that's setting up the extension would be the same, I mm -hmm. think. Um, and then ideally they're they're all components that you could write in Svelte, right? So every yeah. every widget would be just like a Svelte component, ideally. Mm. Jesse, are you able to show me, um, are you able to share your screen again and show me kind of some of the stuff we looked at before with the, the logging in? So I'm curious, um, I assume that when you were logging in before, um, you were logging in on a browser that was already authenticated to GitLab, is that so? Yeah, I was. Uh, I'm curious, can you just, and you don't have to, I don't expect you to log in and you know, show your username and stuff like that, but are you able to open that up in like an incognito and show me like the login, just what it would look like for someone who hasn't logged in yet? I'm just curious. Yeah, sure. Do you see my screen? I do. I see uh, plenty. Of, you're in a uh, Firefox browser right now. It has yep. a new tab. Okay. Yeah, that's that's okay. That's the correct thing to see. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, so I think I had had the application in Netlify. Yeah, there's the application for the previous version. Mm -hmm. And now if I try to edit, it goes to GitLab 
And so I'm not, I'm not seeing, um, sorry, I don't see anything. I'm just seeing a full Firefox browser right now. You don't see the web content in Firefox? Oh, uh, no, I don't. It might be doing the thing where it's freezing. I'm not sure. It's it, it just says Firefox, and then it says plenty hyphen CM, and then nothing else is happening. It's a, it's like the, the splash screen for Firefox. Oh. I hear you clicking, but I don't see anything. Yeah. <laughs> Might be. Oh, yeah. something moved. Okay. Now I see my face. Okay. Can you see it blinking now, the cursor? Uh, I see my face. I, I don't see your cursor, ah. but it's just. It's, it's then freezing. Oh, okay. Because it should be in a Firefox now. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm just seeing like the 8 by 8 oh, web maybe website. I've shared the wrong thing. Entire screen now. OK, yes. OK, I see it now. Great. Um, so Netlify uh, app. So this is the, can okay. you see it now? Yeah, yep. OK, cool. Yep. So if I click the edit button, edit mm -hmm. link, it will go to GitLab oh, to perfect. the login screen. Uh huh. Awesome. And and then it would re re it would redirect you back after. I, I yeah, don't know if you want to expose your email or anything yeah. like that, but um, cool. That's very cool. Okay, that's that's great. Um, and then I know and if you are already logged in, it will we would just uh, go to here and back automatically. Perfect. Love it. That's great. Um, that is awesome. Uh, and then I know we talked about. Uh, it sounds like you, you know. You, obviously, you made a lot of progress on some of the Dino stuff. Um, did you have a chance to look into? I think it was was it Pro's Mirror. Um, it was the editor integrating an editor um, to basically just edit content. I can't remember which project we had talked about using. Uh, Code Mirror. Code Mirror. Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't yet uh, done anything for the content editing side. Sure. I've said spent like uh, three hours for the um, refactoring, and okay. no, no more. <laughs> okay, um, great. So I think, um, yeah, I guess in in terms, so in terms of the next steps again, I think just kind of being able to get the CMS to write back to GitLab in some fashion, mm -hmm. and I and I don't care too much about the editor experience at this point, so. Whether you use Code Mirror or anything, honestly, not as fine. Is I just uh, it'd be cool to get something writing back to like the content folder, and and so we can kick off a CI and kind of get that full lifecycle yeah. build. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, we'll get there after I like ported all the code from the old version to the new refactored version. Sure. And okay. yeah, the authentication yeah. at least. And okay. Fields and so on. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's important to yeah. Or maybe should we like think about the structure how how we make the project the CMS project because if you want it to be a part of this plenty uh, plenty runtime it has to be done <laughs> very different differently. Yeah, so that's kind of, yeah, that's where the questions come in, right? So the way I picture, so I'm not too worried, honestly, about the scaffolding stuff right now. Um, get it kind of like, I mean, what you've done is very cool. I'm not trying to discredit the stuff you've done. It's very, very interesting stuff. Um, and I could tell you put a lot of work into it. So that, that's awesome. But I'm not too worried about the scaffolding at the moment. I'm thinking more of just like the things that actually get produced in that disk folder. So like the idea of like the login workflow and then like, saving things back, all all running in the browser, nothing that, that needs to kind of be server run at the moment. Um, yeah. Getting that workflow. And then I, yeah. I think what will happen once we have those concepts kind of like just roughly sketched out, then we can start, you know, polishing things obviously, but also mm. picking them out and thinking about how we can fit them into the scaffolding that, you know, plenty generates and how that will all work. Um, obviously there's going to be a lot of questions there. So I think keeping things as light as possible now. So it's just like, the, the more, and obviously I know this is, these are just pie in the sky things, but the more they can be just like small components, like, okay, here's a login component. I don't care how it's going to be used. Like, I don't care how it's going to be produced or anything like that. I just want the login to be as self-contained and as small as possible, right? And then you have like 
the, the API writing, like, well, how do we interact with GitHub's or GitLab's rather API to actually write something from a browser? Like how, how do we do that? And like the smaller, more self-contained we can make that, the better. Um, and then we can start thinking about, okay, how do we pick this out and how are we actually gonna put that in? I think that's gonna be a whole process onto itself. But first I wanna get kind of the concepts working, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I had trouble extending the already existing code because it was so unstructured. Mm, yeah, yep, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think making things more modular is good because yep. plenty can gain from those lessons as well, right? So even if, mm, yep. you know, even if we don't use Dino, right? And we don't mm. set up scaffolding that way, the idea that things can be extended, like that will come in handy, right? The you're making yep. it more modular, you're making it to be able to be extended. We might ultimately extend it in a different way, but the idea mm. of doing that should, I think those lessons will kind of come to fruition for, for whatever project uses this. And, you know, yeah. I think we've, we've talked about this before, everything, we're, we're gonna open source everything. So like other projects mm. might want to use this stuff too. So that's, um, that's great. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, the more the more modular and focused we can have it on just kind of that browser experience for now, I think that will just be probably the best path in the short term. That makes sense? Yeah.